Hello everybody, this is AB from Blender52 and today we're going to be going over a few little dirty secrets of UV unwrapping. So when I first started working in Blender, I thought that it was super critical to meticulously unwrap all your objects, put those seams in the right places, often with extreme difficulty, it was time consuming and the reality is you don't need to do any of it. So I do want to preface this video just by saying if you are working in an industry that requires specific UV layouts, please make sure you do follow them. But if you are just a generalist or hobbyist making cool concept art where you just require a one-off shot, let's just get those UVs out however we can, as fast as we can, so that we can get on with making stuff look cool. Okay, so in the latest versions of Blender, a lot of UV unmapping actually gets done for us by default. So if we just delete the cube and we bring in a cylinder, you'll see we get this little box here and it says generate UVs and that's already ticked. So if we go into the UV editing tab, you'll see that when we insert the cylinder, it's already unwrapped for us. But if we decide that we would like to edit this a little bit, extrude, make that, up, take a bit, do that up. Okay, now our UV obviously no longer matches our cylinder. So if we come into the shaders tab and we add a new shader, and let's just bring in a, a material. Let's pop this one in here. And you can see it obviously looks quite horrible. So a lot of the time we actually don't need UVs at all. So if we just pop a mapping node in here and we change this to generated, okay, it still looks off, right? It's all messed up. But if we take this flat and we change it to box, we can now see that that's starting to look a little bit better. And we've got this option here to blend. And you can see where we have seams. When we pull this blend, you can actually see it updating in real time. It gets rid of those seams. And we now have a textured little greeble or whatever you want to call this without any UV unwrapping, just through generated changing flat to box and using the blend. Okay, but say we did want to be a bit more precise and we did want to give this a UV. So what we can do, let's just pop over back to the UV editing tab and you can see there's our really crazy weird UV map. We can say cylinder projection. Okay, and now we've done that and you can see that looks all a bit crazy. But if we pop into this tab here and we just change view on equator to align to object and now you can see that it's automatically made a nice little UV map so if we just pop in there we can see that that works all out nice and perfectly so that's just using cylinder projection so again we go in and we just say U cylinder pro projection and we change this to align to object now you can see that we've got these lines sticking out, which are a bit crazy. And that's actually the top and the bottom of the cylinder. So what we can do is we can just select those separately, go into top view and say you project from view. And we now have our two bits of the cylinder. We can just move them out like that. Nice and easy. Okay, so when it comes to UV hacking, project from view is everything because it allows us to use the bits of the model that we want to and just forget about the rest. No seams, just grabbing what we need. Okay, so if we take a look at this model, it's obviously fairly complicated. And if we have a look at this like body shape, this is something that we we wouldn't want to UV unwrap this. I mean, this would be an absolute nightmare. And the only thing I wanted to do with this whole model was add this one little piece here just with the South African flag and my last name. So in order to do that, 
all we actually needed to do was grab that one little piece. So if we just go into the UV editing mode and we just go to body, you can see here, all I've done is I've grabbed the exact pieces of the model that I need and I've gone into my side view and I've said you project from view and that's the piece of the model that I need and then obviously went into Photoshop and created this texture but you can see here we can just position this to exactly how we want it so that it's nice and visible and there it is we didn't need to come in here you can see I've got the rest of my, my model up here. So all I did was uh, projected this face from the front and I projected this face from the front and then I inverse selected everything else and you can see it's all a big mess up there. I probably just said unwrap you know, and there it all is and I can scale it down and I can throw it in a corner because I don't need it and I don't care about it. I only care about these two sets of faces which i've just as i said gone into a side view you project from view and there it is so similarly if we look at something like this you can see that all i've done is jumped into top view and projected out these two two things from the top so if we go and we look underneath you can see that the model, the texture is actually replicated and mirrored and inverse, but we don't care because we can't see it. We just needed the top pieces. Okay, so one of the really great things about this is that we can actually do multiple pieces of geometry at the same time. So if we just select here on the wing, you can see that the wing is, is two different pieces. But if we select both of them at the same time, and just tab to go into edit mode, you'll see that both of our UVs are here. And all I did was I went into top view, said you project from view, there's our UV. We can just now place it however we want it on our texture and it looks perfect, goes over the seams perfectly. Everything works 100%. Okay, so let's just look at something a little bit more complicated like this piece of the, the cabin here. So let's just, change our texture to cabin and if we go into our object you can see that I've got different pieces as and when I needed them so this top section here you can see it's just this little piece so you probably find if we separate that we just go into top view and we just grab those and you can see it's a U project from the top we can move this into place and we just, obviously I'd done this previously in Photoshop, but we can scale it to fit and there our texture is nice and easily. And then on these side panels, again, we just hop into side view. We say you project from view. There's our piece of geometry and we just position it, scale it up as needed. And here we've added that little texture and then the same thing from the other side we just flip the model and again project from view now if you've got a face that's like a weird angle and say we went into front view and we projected that you know we're going to and then if we put a texture on there it's going to be all stretched out so what you can do is you can just press shift number pad 7 and that aligns your camera to your selection and then you just say you project from view and there you have a perfectly unstretched panel that you can now add a texture to. So did you know that you can have multiple UVs for one object? So if we take our body here and let's just go into shading mode and we say, okay, well, we've got this UV texture that we made by projecting, but we also want to apply a metal to, to this body. So what we can do is if we go into the object data properties 
and we come under UV maps, you'll see we've got one UV map already because that was our projection map. We hit the little plus to create a new one and let's just call this metal. So now what we're going to do, let's delete that material, get a new BSDF and let's just bring in a metal. So we just pop that in there, wait for it to load. Now this obviously isn't working because it doesn't have UV maps. It's picking up just that little bit of a section that we've done there. But if we were to come here and say, select everything and just do like a cube projection. Okay, and then we need to just come in here and we need to say UV map. We join that, we choose metal. Okay, and then we need to do the same thing for down here so that it knows to use the right maps. I'm just going to say UV map there. So now we've got one model using two different UV maps. And if we pop out, you can see, okay, this is obviously the scale on this is a bit, is a bit blown out. So we might just want to take our UV, UVs and scale them up a bit so that that texture looks a bit better. So now we've got two different UVs applied so that we don't have to mess around with how we had figured out to get that working and now we have a separate UV for the body. And all of that without adding a single seam or doing any kind of weird unwrapping, just a simple cube projection. Okay, so another great UV tip is to actually work backwards. So recently I was creating this render and I had to make all of these buildings. And what I actually did was worked backwards. So let me explain what I mean by that. Okay, so the first thing I did was just create my boarding shape, which is basically just a nice stretched cube. And there we go, we've got a building. So let's give it a material. And I created some textures specifically for this, basically just by replicating one texture over and over above itself. And if we just go in there, we can see it looks amazing. So we just hop into our front view, do our good old project from view. Let's jump into UV editor and we can see there it is. Let's just scale that up. And then we're gonna jump into the right hand view and we're gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna scale it up. And if we do that, we can now see that we've got the start of a building. So just you project from view scale that up and if we do this one as well you project from view and we're going to scale it up now what we want to do is just make sure that all of these are actually the same heart so that when we do loop cuts they all moving moving the same and we can just drag these guys down onto the floor. So now we can move these around however we want. So if that's our front of our building, so select the front, let's just move this here so that it kind of fits somewhere on our building that looks normal, something like that looks pretty good and then for the side that already actually kind of works so what we're going to do now is we're just going to start adding in loop cuts and we'll just place them wherever we can see that we're going to need geometry okay so we're just going to keep on adding loop cuts for everywhere that we need them. We put one over there, and we're gonna need one there, we're gonna need one there. And we can always adjust these later. So if we just come in and we see, okay, that one's not quite right, we can press GG 
and we can just bring that down a bit. So let's add some this way as well. And basically we're just putting in guides for where we're going to want to extrude or bevel in or out. So you can see now we've got some windows here and basically we can grab these and I think let's add another loop cut just there yeah, so that I can grab these windows here and then I can just extrude them in. So basically we're just working backwards. We are creating geometry to fit our texture. So now you can see that we obviously get this bit of stretching here and if this was going to be our camera view and we didn't want the viewer to be able to see that we would now just go top view you project from view and you can see that we get those little bits of geometry there and we can just rotate them put them wherever we want to try and match it up to the rest of our our model and the same thing with these we can just hop into the side view you project from view and then we can take these and just pop them over there and now they've no longer got that stretched geometry and you can do the same thing when it comes to extruding so we are just going to extrude out these faces here to create this little balcony and then we'll just grab all of these go into top view you project from view and now they've got a, a texture. So basically just working backwards, creating your geometry to your texture. Okay, so those are just a few little dirty tips on how to avoid UV unwrapping. Hope you never have to unwrap anything ever again. You know, this just saves you time so that you can focus on your creative process. As always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters, Mr. Nigel Hillier, Lee Boynton, Crow3D and Unfi Killian Z. If you would like to support us, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash blender52. Otherwise, I'll see you in a week for the themes. Cheers.